and we've been using LLMs for the past year at Allen, and I'm here to just share some tips of what worked well for us, for us, what didn't work so well, and what we've learned along the way. Um, but before we get started, can I get a quick show of hand of who spends too much time on Hacker News? Ah, not, not so many. Well, I do. I do. And if you do spend time there, you realize that everyone is talking about LLMs. And not only everyone is talking about it, but everyone seems to be an expert about LLMs. And so I'm thinking, well, how do I catch up? How do I stand out among all these people who are doing this? And we live in a world, fortunately, where everyone has access to basically the same LLMs, whether they're open source um, or whether they're behind open APIs. Um, it's great. The world could not be like this. It could be that certain companies had access to really powerful LLMs and others didn't. Um, but we're very lucky. We have access to the same things. But then that begs the question, how do I make myself different? And these things, they just keep getting better. Every time I refresh Hacker News, there's a new article about the new LLM, the new benchmark. And just how do I keep up? It feels like a, a full-time job just to keep up. The thing is, it's not my full-time job. I have my CEO who's telling me, James, you should be doing some LLMs. Our investors want us to do LLMs. I want to do LLMs. So how do I go about building something that actually has value in production? So that's what the talk is going to be about. What we're going to be covering are things that we learned um, shortly, building on your strengths, knowing that your model is not your product, and optimizing for iteration. All right, but before we jump in, um, Allen, for those who do not know, it's a health insurance company. Some of you may be covered by Allen. We were founded eight years ago. We're growing really fast. Um, we're recognized as a leader in AI in France. That might be too small, but it's our president uh, mentioning Allen as one of the top AI companies in France. And just a short blurb about me. So I, I lead the medical AI efforts at Allen. Um, I've built out the core insurance prior to that at Allen. I've been at Allen actually for a very long time. And um, prior to that, I was in San Francisco leading uh, fraud management and machine learning teams at a, at a large payments company. All right, so at Allen, we actually use LLMs everywhere. Um, it's something that our, our founders care a lot about. Uh, and so we'll be using it in things like customer support, sales, um, claims management, uh, a lot of ma claims management in uh, insurance is handling a lot of documents and handling them super fast. We can reimburse you in less than 30 seconds, and we do that through uh, machine learning and through LLMs in particular. We do fraud, we do all sorts of other things. And even we have a lot of tools for employees to use LLMs on a daily basis. So here's a nice up to the right graph, just showing that employees at Allen use LLMs more and more. We have access to tools like Dust, if you've heard of them, um, everyone uses GPT-4 on a daily basis, um, or Claude, or, or the LLM of choice. And finally, the thing I work on is our health services. So Allen is not just an insurance company, it's also a lot of health services that we offer to our members. And one of them is our Allen Clinic, in which you have access to real health professionals in a chat interface, almost 24-7 and for free. So it's, a, it's an amazing service, um, people who use it absolutely love it, they get answers really quickly on all sorts of subjects, whether generalists or specialists. And we're wondering how we could make that even better. And so what's the promise of, of AI with medical, um, medical data? Well, my, my hope is that this will really unlock medical expertise for everyone without having to wait on a doctor, getting answers in seconds, any time during the day, and on any subject. We've noticed that people are a lot more open when they know they're actually not talking to a human. They can talk about things that are very private. They can ask really stupid questions. And the LLM has really infinite patience. You can ask one question, two questions, three questions. You can ask clarifications. You can uh, ask about your, your, I don't know, your sore throat. And then you can ask about your back pain and you won't be kicked out. And this is a big, big change from uh, regular medical practice. And what's really nice at Allen is we still do have medical doctors on staff. And so we can mix both their expertise and the speed of the LLMs um, by having doctors come and verify uh, the information that's being given to you. Now, for those of you who are covered by Allen, you will not find this right away in your app. It's still very much 
in experimentation mode and beta, but we hope to get it out very soon to you. So, for those who are getting started, where do you start? Well, most people will start with GPT-4 or Claude, Gemini Pro, Mistral, and you realize they're actually really good. And once you get a little bit into prompt engineering, you realize it's even better, and you feel really good about yourself. You think, well, what's the, what's the big deal? And then once you get a little bit more experience, you realize the quality is not always there. You know, it, it works 90% of the time, it's good enough for a demo, but not quite good enough for going into production. And as you start tweaking things, you realize it's extremely sensitive to changes. So you tweak something in your prompt or in how you arrange the, your different calls, and all of a sudden, what used to work didn't work, doesn't work anymore. And you're still left with the question at the end, even if you have something that works, is like, well, what did I actually do? Everyone seems to have the same tools, so how, how do I make myself really different from everyone else? So, the things we'll cover, again, building on your strengths, how your model is not your product, and optimizing for iteration speed. The first one, your strengths. So, Alan is in healthcare. Alan wants to be a big actor in healthcare AI, but we're not the only ones. There are a lot of companies out there. There's a lot of funding out there, especially in the United States, there's a lot of money in healthcare. So we have to think, well, what are Alan's strengths? What, what can we do, what can we bring that puts us ahead of others? Because if we're just using the same tools, we're not gonna be ahead. So in Alan's case, we have a brand around health. We have the trust of half a million people. We have the trust around privacy and how we manage the sensitive data. We also are a tech company, we're not just an insurance company, so we have a lot of expertise on technical and data matters. We happen to have doctors on staff, which um, a lot of tech companies do not have. And we already have half a million people who use us and who use our health services. So that helps answer a few questions. You know, sometimes we're wondering, should we build a healthcare AI for doctors? Should we give tools to doctors? Well, the truth is we don't have any distribution network for doctors. We don't have any relationships with them beyond the ones we have on staff. But we do with our patients and with our members. And so that helped inform our decision to keep um, improving the, the chat and working on um, patient-facing AI. So the next point that really, you know, you hear a lot and we certainly learned is you keep thinking about the model, what model I'm going to use, what model I'm going to develop, but that's actually not your product. And at the end of the day, you are trying to build a product that solves problems for your users. And so you have to come back to the basics of product development, which is really understanding the problem you're trying to solve. Knowing your users, we do a lot of user research. We go talk to them, understand their problems, we show them our prototypes, we, we get their feedback and we iterate. This is nothing new. Uh, and it doesn't change with LLMs. You have to really know your data, um, as with any uh, machine learning application. And, and one thing that we really care about is developing expertise in our problem, but especially cross-domain expertise. At Allen, we really believe in what we call collapsing the stack, meaning with very few people, we can do a lot if we have very deep expertise in, in a variety of things. So we don't try to bring one engineer, one person to data, one doctor, and say, work together. We do have these people, but the engineers actually have to become medical experts. Our doctor is actually a pretty good software engineer, amazingly, he's really great. Um, the people on data need to do, do more than just coding, but need to have a bit of an idea of how to architect data, uh, architect systems around the data. And at the end, you just have to focus and build a product. It's easy to get distracted by everything that's going on, but the way you will really differentiate yourself is by building a product that people want to use. All right, we're getting to the, the more technical part, which hopefully will be interesting to you, is in our view, what was the most important? Well, it, on the modeling side, is to optimize for iteration speed. Because as I mentioned, every time you change your prompts, you change your base model, you decide to introduce some, some retrieval, augmented generation, some RAG, if you do some fine tuning, you change the architecture, all of a sudden, you have to make sure that your system is safe again, that it gives quality answers. And especially in the medical field, it is really important. You don't want to change something in your prompt and all of a sudden, we're telling a suicidal person to take some aspirin or to drink some uh, bleach. And so the first things you do is you, you build a bit of a baseline, you have some, some test data that you use. We had a set of uh, 30 or 40 anonymized conversations that we would replay every time we changed the model. But even though 40 conversations doesn't seem like a lot, actually simulating every answer on these conversations 
and then reviewing them all every time you made a change was just painful. It was not fun. You do it once, you do it twice, and then you do it just less and less. So what we really want is something like regression testing. So for, for the engineer's uh, view, regression testing is having a suite of tests that makes sure that if you change something, it will tell you if you broke something. And that's a really important part of engineering and also data. So how, how do we do it? Well, it's a bit like unit tests, um, but for our, our AI agents that represent our doctors. And the way we do it is we've built these patient cards. Patient cards are a way of simulating actual patient problems. And what we'll do is do a simulation of uh, the doctor talking to a fake patient and evaluate the doctor that way. So I'm going to give you an example of what a patient card looks like. Hopefully it's not too, too small. This is fake data. Don't worry. There's nothing sensitive here. Um, but our doctor and our engineers have come together to build this, this, this set of scenarios, of medical scenarios. Here, um, this is Jérôme talking about his father, Pierre, who has uh, some heart condition. The things that he knows about his condition, the things he doesn't know about his condition, there's information about his, his um, medical history, and what the diagnosis is that the doctor should find. And we have a collection of these. We have about, let's say, 50. We're going to build them up um, to cover all the main medical use cases that we want to cover. And then what do we do? Well, we had the doctor agent. That's the thing we want to evaluate. And we actually have to create new agents. We have to create a patient agent to simulate what the patient would say. Then we create another agent to determine when the conversation has stopped. We have a fourth agent to actually do the evaluation, the scoring. And the scoring will be like, did the um, doctor adopt the right tone? Did the doctor ask the right questions? Did they reach the right diagnosis? And the nice thing is for all of these, you can use models, agents, LLMs for it, and you can automate it and run it every time you make a change. Now, this will not totally replace human evaluation, especially on medical stuff. Our doctors tell us we still want to look at it, so we let them look at it. But it definitely allows you to move a lot faster. And for those who follow research, this is actually very similar to what Google published in their AMI paper, which you can look up. And so once you have something that allows you to iterate, iterate fast, well, that's what you need to do. You need to iterate. So you can start doing different prompts, different LLMs, start chaining calls, doing rag, fine tuning, everything you've read about and wanted to do. Uh, but now you can actually do it and make sure that you maintain a good level of quality. And you just need to keep evolving because the base models keep getting better. And even if you had something that worked well, you'll realize that the, the state of the art keeps moving. And so you have to give yourself the means to keep evolving with it. So just summarizing again. You want to find your strengths. That's how you're going to differentiate. Remember that you're building a product and make sure that you can iterate quickly. And that's it. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you very much. It was a very truly fascinating and instructive uh, talk. Thank you. Um, are there any questions here about James' talk in English, maybe? I'm bringing the, the micro. I, I do speak some French. I can. Uh, hello. Uh, so you said that you were using a, um, another agent to test your doctor agent. How do you, it seems like you're an endless uh, rabbit hole where you create an agent to test another one. How do you know that the testing agent actually works? Uh, you're right. You have to make sure that your patient agent actually does the right thing, right. too. So you, you do develop both, um, which we have to do. If you read the Google paper, they actually use the same system to simulate both. They give different prompts, um, and so they actually train both. And we use different systems, but it's the same idea. You do have to make sure that it does the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how do you do at Alan, maybe, to check the return of investment on this LLM project? Ah, you, so the question was about uh, return on investment. It, it's, a, it's something that we have to 
talk about a lot. Now, we have the advantage at Allen that we're an established company, we have funding, and so we were able to invest and explore. Right? We're not a tiny startup that ha every day has to justify um, the, the time we spend on it. So that, that's great. Um, we do have to like, discuss where we're going to bring value to Allen. And the, the, these are still discussions at the company, but there are different ways. One is help differentiate Allen from other insurers. So help support our insurance business. Uh, Allen started as an insurance company, sells insurance, and we were the first digital insurance. But now being a digital insurance is not that, that impressive anymore, right? Then we started reimbursing in le under a minute for a lot of cares, and that was cool. But people are catching up in terms of reimbursement speed. And so there's always this idea that we always want to keep offering more, more health services, really differentiate, do things that others won't be able to do so that when people think of health insurance, they'll choose Allen. So that's one approach. Other things we're looking at is can we use, do something different, reach the broader public, people that are not just at Allen, make some, really occupy the health AI space, at least in France, maybe in Europe, um, because there definitely will be companies that will come and bring medical expertise to the masses, and we want Alan to be there. And how we monetize that, I don't know, but th that's a good question. Well, I think this is, this is de definitely cool in terms of branding and marketing. It's not always enough to sell uh, the company on. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for your talk. Um, I've seen in your first slides, I think it was said, uh, Alaners. I'd like to know whether it's clients or there are users inside Allen. Uh, yes, I apologize. We, we say Alaners for employees of Allen. So, so employees of Allen use LLMs in their day-to-day -day job a lot. Okay. Uh, and about data, I'd like to know uh, from where did you get the data? And I'd like to know also if you have access to the DPM. Uh, in France, there is the medical... Um, uh, I don't, I don't remember the name in, in English, but it's uh, Dossier Medical Partagé. Ah, okay. Do you have the access to it, or uh, is it like from uh, open source data that you have, or from data that you gathered through your uh, client's use of Allen? Right. So, so the question was, what, what data do we use? So w we try to be very responsible with health data. Um, it's part of what makes our job actually difficult, um, because we can't just... Like we, we make a promise to our users that we do not use their data. It's only accessible to the medical team. Um, so it's, uh, it's not as easy as with other domains. Um, what, what's good is we do have doctors on staff who can grade conversations and help give feedback. Um, they, they have access to the, the information, so they, they can tell us if the model is doing a good job or a less good job. Um, but definitely working on medical data is a challenge. Um, that's why often a lot of people in the space use um, synth synthetic data. They'll try to generate data that looks close to real data, or they will anonymize data. But anonymizing data is, you know, it's always just a little bit risky. Um, whether we have access to um, health data that's like publicly held, like the the dossier médical partagé, um, no. <laughs> no. Um, uh, one one last question maybe is just about: Do you have a, a, an LLM ops? Like so, a circle of life for your LLMs, or is it like? A so, do we have LLM ops? We we don't have any dedicated roles to that. Um, we have engineers who have different levels of expertise, and we do try to share knowledge in the company. So we have some syncs where we we will share what we've learned. Um, I think this is something that the company still needs to get better at in terms of really developing expertise that is shared and and used more broadly. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your talk. Um, I have a question about how do you prior prioritize uh, on which uh, uh, projects uh, you will work with IA? So you, you were talking in the beginning of your talk about a lot of um, different use of IA uh, at ah. Alan. So I guess you are not working uh, in the same time and with the same energy in all these projects. So right. how do you prioritize? So, so the question was on prioritization. I, I work on the medical side. There are a lot of other people working on all sorts of other AI um, aspects at Allen. Um, so our big ones are document processing, customer management, um, customer support. Um, those are maybe the more external things. But then internally, it's just better sales tools, um, note-taking tools. Really. We, we're really encouraged to, to use AI everywhere. And they're, they're, as I, sh I showed, the metrics of like <laughs> how much people use AI. So, so then in terms of prioritization, 
Um, it, it's a question of where do you see the value, and that's always a discussion in the company. Is it brand value that you're getting? Is it um, efficiency? Um, Allen is an insurance company. Insurance tends to be a pretty low margin business. It's not like a SaaS company. So you really are looking at trying to reduce your costs um, in terms of like, management. Uh, so, or reduce the cost of serving um, medical claims and doing medical, um, medical services. So there, there's that aspect too. So there's always a bit of a cost aspect. There's a revenue aspect. There's a brand aspect. You kind of have to balance that. People have different opinions at the company. And so it's always a discussion. Thank you. Um, let's go in. Thank you. Um, how do you protect yourself from hallucinations? Is it by the sheer mass of uh, passion cards uh, and testing? Is it on the product side uh, by saying to the, the user that uh, this data is to be trusted or not? Uh, do you have cross verification? Yeah, that's that's a very very good question. Um, how, how do we protect against hallucinations? I think there are, there, are there are a few few ways that have worked well for us. One one is we do have doctors coming behind to check, so so and they come pretty quickly, um, and it's because our approach is rather conservative here. We 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 know people are skeptical. We want to be safe. Um, we hope to make it that you don't need a doctor behind all the time, but that's what we're starting with. I would say there, there's some techniques also you can use where before giving your answer, you can ask the model again and say, like, does this actually make sense? And if it doesn't make sense, you, you, don't, you don't say it. The, 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 we, we do know that there's some places where our models didn't perform as well. Things around, for example, the French health, industry, health um, system so like do you need a, a prescription to go to the doctor do you need a do you need um, a referral are you going to get reimbursed well that kind of stuff sometimes it'd make things up so we know that so for those you can try to bring more grounding and real act factual data so with um, retrieval so so we've built some retrieval on amelie.fr which is the website that has a lot of information on the health the french healthcare system so those, those are some of the things we did thanks Thank you very much, James. Merci beaucoup. On peut l'applaudir, je pense. Um...